Right guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all gonna be about how to improve the strike with your irons. We're gonna be talking about impact and we're gonna be talking about the wrists and how the wrists influence the loft on the club. Because what we really wanna do with our irons is take a little bit of loft off the golf club. And you'll have probably heard the term compress the golf ball before, right? That is really maximizing our efficiency because we're taking some loft off the golf club. And what we see with the majority of elite golfers at impact with a mid iron, so I've got a seven iron in my hand here, is they are creating a shaft lean. That just means the club is this way, not here or this way. So they're actually getting the handle ahead of the golf club. And they're doing that by about nine to 11 degrees with a mid iron, a bit less with a longer club, purely because that ball's gone more forwards in their stance. Now they're not taking nine to 11 degrees of loft off the golf club because of how the shaft bends into impact, but they're generally de-lofting the golf club by about one. So if they've got a seven iron in their hand, dynamically by the time they hit the ball, they're actually hitting it with a six iron loft. If they've got a six iron in hand, they're hitting it with a five iron loft. Often what I see with golfers is them adding loft onto the amateur golfers, quite often by a club. So they're losing out on about two clubs distance. That could be 20 yards just by this movement without having to put any more energy into your golf shot. So at impact, we want to see this type of movement. And I have for you an amazing drill, but we're going to have to talk a little bit about what you've got to do to square the club face if you are gonna have your hands more forwards. So let me show you the drill first of all, and then we'll talk through it. So, first drill we're gonna do is we're gonna get the ball way forwards in your stance, like a driver ball position. But I'm gonna keep the club back where it would normally be, more in the center of my stance. So the club is, I don't know, a good six inches behind the golf ball here, okay? And, I'm gonna try and hit this ball as low as possible. So I've made it harder. By moving it forwards, the ball should go more up in the air. But I'm gonna try and hit it low, not by moving this way. So while I think about that, what you could do to help that, to ensure that you don't cheat and slide ahead with your whole body with your head, is if you put an alignment stick in the middle of your stance, underneath your nose. Let's say that we try and keep your head over that point, that we're not cheating and going forwards with our whole body. So the club is in line with the white stick, the center of my stance, but I've got the ball way forwards. And I'm gonna try and hit it as low as possible by getting my hands more forwards impact, creating more shaft lean. Now, if we do this, and I'm gonna do this the wrong way, if you like, first of all, just to show you. If we encourage hands forwards and we do this punchy drill, I want you to get through to halfway through position where the club is similar height to the hands. It hasn't necessarily passed hands. Now you'll have seen, I'll have probably got to here and then come back to here, but I'm sensing through impact that my hands are forwards and I'm really exaggerating that movement. But where did that ball go? It was a good strike. I felt like I took some loft off the golf club but the launch angle was still too high because that ball was going out to the right of the target. So it was a push for me as a right-handed golfer. And that's often what I see. So golfers trying to get their hands forwards, but they're leaving the club face open because just shoving the hands forwards is gonna do what to the club face? So we've got to make sure at impact that we actually get a little bit of more of this movement. So we call this supination of the lead wrist. So supination, just think of it holding a bowl of soup. So the palm is starting to face more up to the sky. Now that may feel to you a little bit more rotation of your forearm. And uh, you could do it through the wrist in the downswing. So if you actually got this type of motion in the downswing, the lead wrist moving more into flexion that we see with great golfers. We just don't see enough with amateur golfers. If you can get enough of that, you had pre-impact to getting that club face starting to point a little bit more down to the ground, then that's gonna be fine as well. So what I'd like you to be able to do is stand there on the range with this setup. So the club back where it'd normally be, the ball way forwards, trying to hit half swings punchy as low as I can 
So if you're on a range where you can measure the launch angle, a top tracer range or a trap man range, and you've got some data, or you're on a simulator or whatever it might be, and you've got a launch angle, try and get it lower and lower and lower and lower. But I don't want that ball starting way out right. So I want the ball starting more on target. So I'm trying to push my hands forwards, but I'm trying to get the sense of a little bit more rotation here in my forearm, a little bit more supination of my lead wrist and palm. So we're actually getting this type of movement into impact. Let's see if I can do it. So low and straight. And I didn't cheat. That was a really good one. I didn't cheat and move my whole body forward. You can see here, I've almost kept my head, my upper half feeling like it's still over this alignment stick. A little half swing, finishing with the club in a pretty low position. Now I hit that low and it pretty well down my target line, if anything, just slightly left. So I got that launch angle down to 17.6. So I'd stand there and practice and get set myself a target. Well, I could hit up, can I hit it lower than that? Can I get it, you know, under 17 degrees? It's gonna to be tough. I've set myself a hard one there. So balls way forwards, club back, little half swing as low as possible, but I'm not gonna leak the ball right. And I'm doing that with that rotation. I'll show it one more time in a sec. Again, good rotation, good low shot, good punchy swing. I'm hoping that is a little lower, but the feel there for me is not only hands forwards, but I'm gaining this type of movement through impact. Now that's very different to here, right? I'm not saying break down the wrists and flip. I'm talking about getting this type of movement into impact. That's very different to this type of movement. I'm sure you can see the difference there. Now I got that under 17, 16.7. So I'm pretty happy with that for my seven iron. Now different, depending on what club you have in terms of the manufacturing style, they're potentially gonna have different loft on, right? So, so back to a normal ball position, but trying to get a lot of those same feels. So at impact, I've got my hands forwards and I'm allowing some rotation here of the forearm, some supination of that wrist to try and square the club face. Yeah, so down my target line, on the green, which always helps, but down my target line, felt a very good contact, felt like I got that ball turf strike. So if you've been struggling with heavy contacts, hitting that ground before the golf ball, this is very much for you. If you're someone where you've just been floating the ball up in the air and losing a lot of energy, this is very much for you. I got that launch angle, 18.6. So tour players with a seven iron are generally getting a launch angle at 17 degree launch at 7,000 revolutions of backspin. Because you're not gonna generate as much speed as them, I would, wouldn't have thought so. Anyway, I don't know who you are watching this video, but if you're not generating as much speed as a tall player, you will, you will lower your spin, so you need a slightly higher launch angle, but we really don't want that launch angle passing 20 degrees unless you're a very slow swinger. So most golfers I meet are, are losing out because they are creating too high a launch. They are not at impact with that handle forwards. The last little drill I want you to finish with, just something you can do at home with no golf ball, is grip way down the shaft. So I've come almost down bottom end of the grip to the shaft here, and I just make some swings trying to get at impact the handle pointing ahead of my lead side here, okay? So the impact is that movement. And look at the club face by the time you get to the golf ball that we can square the club face that we're not returning with the club face here. So we've got to work on again that rotation and the hands being forwards. So I do that as an at-home drill. The range drill, I would do that ball forwards punchy ones that I just showed you. I know that's gonna help every golfer improve the contact with that iron. So make sure you give it a go. If you enjoyed the content, if it has helped, smash the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content just like this.